Um, so I'm going to chin whack. I'm having a very healthy hot water in case at the other end of the scale with a <laughs> bottle of Peroni. Yeah, no such thing as hot water. <laughs> uh, we're just going to be having a little chat today about um, street photography, uh, where it's going for Keith this year, and his passion surrounding shooting people in natural settings, really. Cool. Um, so, first I just want to sort of ask, um, when you're shooting people in a street setting, what do you feel you get more from that person as opposed to in the studio? Um, obviously, it's very raw, it's a natural emotion that they're expressing because they don't ideally know that you're there. Um, so what sort of comes across from them more? Well, two things really, I suppose, there's two things that you asked there. One is the difference between um, in a studio environment and in a street environment. What I feel is the studio environment is really, really quite closed in. So most people, if they haven't, if they're not models and they haven't been photographed a lot, feel feel that really. They mm -hmm. feel that you know hemmed in feel. Mm -hmm. And for me, it takes a little bit longer to warm that person up to get that person to settle. Um, the interesting thing about on the street, I do it in two ways. One, um, some people won't know that I'm photographing them, but a lot of times I will go up and ask them if I, if I can photograph them. I'll do a portrait, a street portrait with them. And it, I think it's much easier outdoors because it's freer, there's, mm -hmm. you know, the space is there, they feel okay, mm -hmm. it happens quite quickly. Yeah. Um, if you go up to somebody and smile and sort of nod and say, you look amazing, can't photograph you. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not lying, you know, if they're sort of like, if they don't look amazing, you've got to find something um, that looks good or, mm -hmm. or whether the clothes are whatever to mm -hmm. make them feel good. Yeah. I think the main thing after that is having an idea of how you position them, where you talk them. So I tend to watch people a little bit first and understand, mm -hmm. try and understand their personality a little mm -hmm. bit. And then from there, I can easily position them how I want them to be mm -hmm. in a quite a natural way. So I think it is easier outdoors, yeah. um, mainly because you're not restricted with four walls. And They're in their own habitat really, aren't they? Yeah. Like, then that uncomfortable feeling of being shot directly on a background that's something they're not used to. Yeah, and I think if you, in the nicest possible way, hit them hard and hit them fast, mm -hmm. in other words, don't give them time to think, yeah. um, they still stay quite natural. Um, but I think that's down to the skill of the photographer. Like I said, I think the important thing for me is watching them uh, for a few minutes to mm -hmm. understand who they are, what they are, and how, how their body language is, and then I can quickly tune into them um, mm -hmm. and take it from there. Uh, we discussed that, I'll just touch on anyway, um, about how you sort of approach somebody in the street that you're going to have a chat to. And not to take some good shots, so I'm sure you would. Um, recently on your blog, you wrote about the psychology of mirror neurons, um, yeah. which, for, if anyone hasn't read it, and you should have read it by now, um, yeah, it's <laughs> just sort of approaching somebody with a smile or a nod. Maybe they have noticed you with the camera, you might have shot them without them realising, and then they, they sort of catch on. Um, just tell me a little bit about maybe some of the characters that you've got to know um, through that initial smile, that initial wink, um, and how it changes somebody's reaction towards you once they know you are shooting them. I think if you go up to anybody and smile, it's a wonderful thing to do because inevitably they smile back if you go up to somebody and, and you sort of have got a bit of a frown on them, they look at you with the same sort of frown. So I think that's what the mirror neurons are all about, is however you approach somebody is how they will approach you mm -hmm. or how they will feel about you. So if you're happy, you're smiling. Um, who doesn't want somebody to smile mm -hmm. at them, no matter how old you are or how young you are, you mm -hmm. know, everybody likes somebody to smile at you. I like it makes you smile feel good. these days, not no. sure. there's not that sort of communication and that link between strangers anymore. No, really. because we're all on devices yeah, now, really. Yeah. Like. Um, and you see people walking the streets and they have their heads down and they're just focused on where they're going and using a mobile. Mm. Um, so I just think it's nice sometimes. Sometimes I'll smile at somebody just for sake of it. Yeah. You always get a smile back. Yeah. I was crossing the road the other day and there were a guy in a white van in me but he had his hard hat on and everything. And um, as I was starting to cross, he, he collared me and, and looked at me. And I just went, and I just nodded like that. And he instinctively nodded back. Mm. So sometimes it's nice to play games like that. Um, but I think if you go up to somebody, how I approach people anyway is I, I just smile at somebody and just say, for instance, I met an Elsie Angel who was preaching God in Edinburgh and 
he, he, you could see he was a bit of a character. Yeah. And uh, he was quite a big guy as well, quite a, a tough looking guy. Mm. And I just went up to him and I don't always say this, but I said it with a smile and I got what I wanted back, which was, can I just say, you look absolutely amazing. You've got a beautiful face, can I photograph you? Mm. And the, the action one, but because I was smiling, he smiled back yeah. and he broke the ice. Yeah. And then I, I just said, tell us a little bit about what you're doing here. I can mm. see, you know, you're preaching a little bit. Tell me about your life. And people do. Yeah. Um, it's just a nice thing to do is communicate with somebody. And then from there, I settled in very quickly. This all lasted probably two or three minutes. And then I positioned him. It's having that idea of what you want to do with Sunday. Mm -hmm. If you walk up to Sunday and go through that process and don't have an idea what to do with them, then you just both stand there and go. Yeah. And you point the camera at somebody's face and they look awkward at you. And you don't get what you wanted from that person, the reason exactly. you were attracted to them to be shot in the first place. So, this is the shot. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, um, this is the shot that I was just talking about. Patch just kind of handed it me. And it was quite, um, I thought, quite a good looking guy actually. And his wife, this is his wife. So, going back to positioning somebody, it's alright approaching them and making them smile and, and that, but you've got to have some sort of idea what to do with them. So, I just wanted him to stand proud um, because through the week we're in Los Angeles, he's passing his bikes. And on a Saturday or a Sunday, whichever, um, he preaches. Uh, I think it's Bob's ministry, it is. And he's with his wife, and he's proud about doing that. So, I just positioned him. I wasn't worried about using filling flash or anything, I just wanted to capture his character. And his wife quickly wanted to run away. I was going to say, I can't quite pick up her expression there, but she doesn't look comfortable. She's smiling. She's smiling. but Because I said to her, I said, don't go, don't go, because behind every good man there's a good woman. Yeah. Which made her laugh and made him smile. Yeah. And I just wanted him to feel proud. Um, and he did. Um, sometimes I get people to fold their arms. I'm well known for walking into shops. The last one I did was a cheese shop in Edinburgh. Um, I just walked straight in and I said, you've got some tremendous cheese in here, um, can I photograph you? <laughs> and the guy, not have their cheese complimented. <laughs> yeah, and the guy just looked at me and looked a bit strange again and I just explained what I did and what I wanted to do and uh, he let me. Mm. I've done that in restaurants and, and loads of places. But the wonderful thing about all this is, you get to touch somebody, you get to speak with somebody and it makes you feel really good. It probably makes them feel good as well. Yeah, it does. The fact that they've been approached for the way they look, whether it be interesting, unusual, beautiful, older, it's the fact that you've approached them, you find them interesting, so it's a compliment for them, it's going to give yeah. them a little bit of a buzz, isn't it? And yeah. Who wouldn't want that? And talking about meeting interesting characters, um, we've met interesting characters all over. Uh, one of the best ones, I think, was um, we were doing a wedding in Italy uh, in a place called Barolo. One of my favourite red wines is Barolo. Uh, so we visited, I wanted to visit uh, Barolo Vineyard, and when we did, um, there was this old guy there, uh, and it was his vineyard, and he had this dirty vest on, and he was more interested in carving than his wine. And he didn't want to take us to have a look at the wine, he wanted to take us to have a look at his carvings. Yeah, we, 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 um, we spent half a day with him mm -hmm. and eventually did take us down to the wine cellar but we got to know this guy in a big way and knew about the history of um, the vineyard mm -hmm. and then he taught us how to drink wine, red wine in particular how you heat the, you know, in a big volume class and how mm -hmm. you heat the wine up with your hand and it was just a fantastic afternoon and everywhere we go we have such experiences so. so all these people you're learning something as well yourself about yeah. people about wine about all sorts of things yeah and more importantly drinking it of but, course yeah yeah you know, it, it, for a wine drinker no well yeah <laughs> I, I love red wine yeah. i love barolo uh, i like the odd beer but my favorite tip is red wine yeah so but yeah it's um it's quite a rich life i think and, and it's rich because you're meeting people and you are communicating, talking, getting involved mm -hmm. with people. And for me, there's nothing that's finer. It lifts my spirits. Yeah, you're a self-proclaimed fan of people, aren't you? So? Yeah, I, I love just yeah, mm -hmm. chatting and, and listening.
Yeah, of course. You just hit there about um, heading up to Italy and what sort of areas, I mean there must be hundreds of untapped areas, um, cultures, situations that you would want to shoot. What sort of on your radar for the next coming year maybe or where really pulls you in, where is interesting you at the minute? There's several places I want to go to. One of them is Istanbul. So we are going next month, mm -hmm. um, this month really, February. We're going in February. Um, we're going to go for um, at least a couple of weeks. I want to develop a street photography course out there. I think it's a fascinating country. Mm -hmm. I've never been to Istanbul before. It's a place I've always wanted to go. The other one, which is the total opposite to where we live, um, is Tokyo. Mm -hmm. um, Tokyo will have to wait till next year. But then there's things like India, China, uh, Mongolia. Um, there's just endless amounts of places mm. I want to go it's and cultures. Like, endless cultures, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, for somebody that loves people, it's just a lifelong ambition to go to as many places as possible. Mm. And my career has held me back from travelling because, sort of being fashion and commercial for 20 odd years, I've sort of worked really hard and, and not really done much travelling. Apart from holidays when I've sort of um, fed my soul with doing the street photography mm -hmm. which is my personal stuff. Um, so now we're sort of semi-retiring from that and um, this is the business really is me out there doing street photography and travelling. So we're just you know living um, life to the full at the moment and enjoying every minute of it. Um, a bit scary from a financial point of view, trying to develop these other countries and, mm. and everything. We're not trying to develop them, but trying to develop the courses yeah, yeah. over there. Um, but it's just a great way to live life, I think. So you're out in the field, um, you're shooting people, you're travelling around all day, you're getting into nooks and crannies, little buildings, little cafes. You don't want to be taking a whole production team with you. No. What's, what's your equipment of choice? What's your camera? What's your lens? You shoot on film? Just talk me through what you take with you and how um, it works for your day. For me personally, I want to be as light as possible and as, as, as inconspicuous as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really take a camera bag either. I tend to take just a shoulder bag that mm -hmm. doesn't look like a camera bag, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I will only ever take one camera uh, and it will generally be film. So it would be probably... I've shot with Likers and all sorts, but... My favourite camera at the moment for street photography is this Fuji. Mm -hmm. um, it's film, it's 645, so it's a much bigger negative than 35mm. It's a rangefinder, um, but it's light. Mm -hmm. It's got a fixed equivalent of a 35mm lens. Um, so for me, that is perfect. Um, and at the moment, it, I swap about. That's definitely one of my favourites for street photography. Another one is, is the Rolly 6.6. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to take, it's a bit heavier, I will tend to take this if I'm thinking or oh, I'm going to do street portraits more than street as in just taking anything and everything mm -hmm. that I come across or whatever situation. So this would be more specific. And then from a small, tiny little camera, I'll take a, a Rolly 35S, which is a great little mm -hmm. tiny camera that you can stick in your pocket. Um, the negative about this is you can't focus, you've got to guess, yeah. but then I just use his own focusing system, so yeah. I pretty much set things up as, as I go along. So, one camera, um, a short focal length lens, mm -hmm. um, semi-wide angle, which is 35mm, and for me that's perfect. It also allows me to get close to my subject matter, and I think one of the best things you can do it is scary, but one of the best things you can do is get in close because mm. you really feel um, the situation and you can feel everything around you. Yeah. And for me, that's really, really important. You don't want something too obtrusive, really, if you're sort of in someone's face and they want to feel more relaxed as well. I mean, a beautiful looking cameras. Do you ever get people asking you about your equipment or do you meet photographers on the way and they sort of say, you know, Yes, it's a really good question that, yeah, I mean, they, they do cause, specifically that one, mm. um, the Rolly 66, it does cause a bit of a, um, it's a bit of a conversation point. Sometimes mm. photographers will come up to me and say, are you still using this old gear, why don't you get a digital, you know, get a digital camera, I shoot digital cameras as well. Mm. Um, but other people say, wow, you know, that looks really 
nice mm. and tell me about it yeah. and again it's a conversation starter mm. so yeah it's both yeah it, it works both ways really mm. I just love using them I love film um, I think the reason my main reason for using film is it's how we were brought up mm. it's what I was brought up in this industry with um, but also for me film makes you think a lot more and often with digital, you tend to fire too many shots off. So you're never in that zone, you're mm -hmm. always yeah. you're outside. Just, just snapping away rather than really thinking about yeah. the shots, yeah. So I tend to use film for that reason. Mm -hmm. And certainly with 645, um, you've got 15 shots per roll. So it does slow you down and it makes you choose what you want to photograph a little bit more than just willy nilly. When you're shooting fast, with digital, you miss everything that's yeah. around you. Yeah. So that's my choice, really. Yeah, that's great, Keith. Thanks very much. That's been a fantastic insight into street photography. Um, and going through to... what's in my mind. Yeah, and what's in that uh, that mind of yours. So thank you very much. No, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure, and thanks for coming. <laughs>